Hi. How's everybody doing how, during the quarantine? Yeah, how's the old lockdown going? Um, how's it going for you, babe? Well, it's pretty much the same as our normal days, <laughs> only we don't get to go to the restaurants and stores as often as we usually do. So that's a little bit different. Yeah, that's true. This looks a little crooked. There's more drive-by eating going on than there is dining in. Actually, there's zero dining in, so. At restaurants, you mean? Yeah. We're dining in here every night. Yep. Are you sick of me more than normal? No, as long as we get to mix in a dinner or two at the Y. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, we went there. That was super fast. Yeah, too. we usually get a little further than that before we usually give our audience a little foreplay. Yeah, we you just jumped right in there with a quickie. <laughs> All well, right, what are we talking about today? So today, this um, we did a call the other day with some uh, people, and uh, we came up with this for that call, and we really like it, and so we're going to repeat it a few times. Um, I would. We do have a really big announcement, though. Can I tell them? Yeah. The Audible is out yep. of our book, Marriage Audio. from Miserable to Magnificent. The audiobook is out. And if um, you want to be continued or continually mesmerized by our voices, then you should get it because we read it ourselves. Yep. <laughs> or <laughs> it's actually decent. I mean, saying we have our own studio and recording equipment and... Um, so it's not a total hack job. I think it's pretty good. I think we did a good job. They wouldn't let us, they wouldn't have accepted it if it wasn't, if the audio quality wasn't good enough. It's true. That's why we had to wait so long. Anyway, um, we have a couple of them that we're going to give away. Um, Ooh, So giveaway. the first two people that listen to this podcast, because we're not making this offer well, yeah, this is the only, so you have to go to our Bigger Love page or the Not So Perfect Couple page on Facebook and leave a message that says, I want a free audio book. I heard, and I promise to leave a review if you send it to me. If you send us that message, I heard about it on your podcast, tell us where you heard it, then we will send you a promo code and you can get a free copy of the audio book. But we need awesome. reviews. Yeah, reviews are gold. Yeah, we do need reviews. Reviews are our currency. We've we got, need reviews for the podcast and the book. And we still, it helps other people um, have access to all yeah, whatever the material. One, whatever one you bought, if you still haven't left a review, please please go do that. Um, right now, for the next month, we're not making a dime on any of this stuff. Um, well, the audio book, we don't a have a, a choice. The, like, that's all oh, the audible. audible. Audible sets all their own pricing, but yeah, this, we we're going to keep the price low until this quarantine's over that's how i feel about it yeah the lowest we could set the kindle book is 99 cents um because anyway we won't make any money on that one and then the lowest that we can set the paperback book was whatever it's at now 780 or something and we don't make a dime on that either the rest is all on amazon so um and that's our gift to you while yeah. this is a difficult time for everybody yeah so all this promotion isn't shameless self-promotion it is help, well it's still shameless promotion. help it's still shameless self-promotion but it isn't but it's a little bit altruistic yeah and that's why we like the altruism that's a good thing we do like the altruism okay so let's jump in yeah so we've got these these well it started off as three things and then i added a fourth and then we realized that the first thing is almost two things well, I think it is two things. They're not the same thing at all, other than the word self. Just well, saying. one doesn't even have the word self in it, but it's intro. So it means looking inward, which is yourself. Unless <laughs> you're a proctologist. Well, intro also means the beginning. So I, I think it's five things. Well, the word means looking inward. The whole word does. If we didn't say the whole word. All you said was intro. This is gonna this is gonna get heated. This is gonna be a big time argument right here in front of everybody. Yeah, well just to tell everybody how I'm right and let's move on. All right, you're right. Hey, we got these five things we want to talk to you all about. Yes. The first two kind of dovetail together. High five on that, by the way. Um, what do you mean? 
Well, I just... No, if I high-five you, then you're going to think you were right. No, I know I'm not right. I know it's, it, <laughs> there, there is no right answer, right? But I, but I, when you can do that, I'm real proud of you, and I feel really happy. Oh, good. Thanks. So we're on day two of our 30-day hiking challenge, and the allergies are so bad out there that... Uh, for me, not for Patty. Patty's fine, but I have horrible allergies. Yeah. So we may have to tag team this hiking thing, I think. No, I want to still try to go. I'm just right. going to bring lots of Kleenex and. All right, we'll give it another go. Um, maybe I'll end up taking an allergy pill, but. All right, we, we digress already. Five things. The first thing, and it's always the first thing, is self care, self love. Yep. And we don't need to go deep on that one because we've done it tons of times in multiple different podcasts. But if you're new, um, what does self-love entail, honey? It entails loving yourself. Yeah, but how do you do that? Oh, there's so many ways, but one... The masturbation one? Yeah. Really? For oh. sure. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's it's one, but it's not the one that we're talking about right now. That's not really a self-care item. I well, don't, I, I I I don't know if I agree with that. I actually think self-pleasuring is really... Um, healthy and it can teach you a lot about what you like and don't like about sex we're sort of getting off topic but i absolutely think that self-pleasuring is self-love okay well what are it's some other not kinds the only of self-love kind. that are the kind we usually talk about okay so there's the kind where you're taking care of yourself mm -hmm. meaning you're treating your body and your mind and your spirit well like you're exercising and eating well that's a lot of good self-care. You're sleeping, also good self-care. You're doing whatever spiritual practices make you feel connected. Take some time out for yourself whatever. and do something that lights you up. And if that is not possible right now, let's say you're a go-to-the-gym guy or a girl. Um, we we got to get creative. Do it. I do a workout <laughs> in a tiny little space every day. Yeah. So. Here's the thing. Push it is super, super, super easy to get drugged down by all of the negativity and the doomsdaying that's going on right now. And self-care is usually one of the first things. It's like, ah, fuck it. I'm just going to eat this whole bag of Cheetos. Yeah, and or three I'm, donuts. I can't go to the gym, so I'm just not going to work out. I'll go on a diet when the stock market goes back up. Um, yep, I've heard that. I've heard that too. So... It, the self-care thing is it's it's more about kind of keeping your all of these things are actually about keeping yourself grounded and 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 giving you some tools to just kind of push through that that weight that kind of heaviness well i think the other thing that's happening right now is with everybody in quarantine and people are home with their kids they're also trying to do work from home they're trying to do you know school at home that this even though everybody's squished at home they're still a lot of stuff going on and also self-care goes by the wayside when you get too busy yeah. and i think what we're trying to say is you need you need to make time for that so that you can bring your best self to all those busy things that you have to do and all the rest of the things that we're about to talk about and if you're one of those people that has done what i just said because i i know because i've i've been kind of i've gone in a little mini waves of that i think a lot of people are probably very close to that in that you know probably not going to extremes, but definitely understand and can relate from a mini wave standpoint. And um, what pulled me out of it was the introspection. I started thinking, man, I just feel like I'm really edgy. I feel like I have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. I feel uh, like something's just off. And I started, I'm like, so I did a little introspection and I thought, and this happens to be number two also. Um, introspection. I said introspection. I know. I was just highlighting it. Oh, Keep good going. highlight, baby. Keep nice going, job. Baby. Was that a yellow highlighter or a pink one? I think it was pink. Okay. Um, but I I kind of took a look at it and thought, you know what? I think it's 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 the weight of the negativity. I can feel it. I, I, I mean, I wasn't really being negative or anything. I just felt like I was a little bit more defensive than normal. And like I had a little chip on my shoulder and that some of the stories I was telling myself about circumstances around me were really heavy. Like, whoa. Can take you, a look at that. Take a look at that story for a second and let's really think about if that was done maliciously or it could have just simply been an accident. Can you And can then you, I would reread that email or I would reread that quote or that um 
I was going to say, messen- can you be specific? messenger message? Yeah. Can you be specific? I mean, you don't have to say names, but can you be more specific about what, what stories you were telling yourself or what things? They were mostly related to other people and communications that I'd had with them. And, um, and, and me, like feeling, me feeling like I was either being singled out, attacked, or, um, or just being, somebody was just being rude to me. And so then when I went back through and read them with a different, I mean, it was all a story I just told myself. I'm like, this, this, I guarantee you somebody just wrote this message really fast and then probably didn't even come back to their computer for the rest of the day. It wasn't like they were sitting there waiting to pounce on me. So I read it when I read it with that thought in mind, it was like, yeah, there's, I just built a huge story around that whole thing and was pissed off about it for several hours. So do you remember me saying anything to you about that? No. Um, so <laughs> okay. the, the introspection part is that, well, that would be extrospection then. Do you want to talk about extrospection and add that to the deal? No, but I think that, I think I could, I noticed you were telling stories. I noticed how angry and irritated you were, not just with the people on the email, but with me, you're very short. And, and I could tell something was not right. Well, because I wanted you to agree with me that this person was being rude. Yeah. And I did, I couldn't go there with you because I just didn't think it was true. And I, you know, it's delicate when you have to say to your partner, are you okay? Do you, I don't even know what I said. It must have been not. It must have been gentle and safe enough, though, that you felt like you. No, could. I'm pretty sure I felt irritable. And then the next day. Yeah, actually, you were mad. Day, You're like, no, I'm, I'm not telling any stories. This is how it is. And I was like, okay. But the next, the next day, um, when I woke up and I was sitting out there by myself, and I did my own introspection that was not prompted by any nagging or gentle suggestions um and it all came to me like it was my own idea so that's what made it better (laughs) great well whatever works (laughs) (laughs) anyway um the third thing is Is that all you want to say about introspection yeah people get it we got a smart audience i know it well i think that the i think for me anyway i've noticed also this it's just sort of like an like sort of what you talked about an app like an apathy like oh fuck it i don't care if i get this done or do that or don't do that so i have a little bit of that and then i also just feel this heaviness even though i don't look at the stats i don't watch the news you know i i do get on facebook occasionally and i'm having random conversations with friends and things the or when we leave the house, you know, to go to the grocery store or whatever, it, it's a weird time. And I can just feel the weight of it, the, the anxiety and the fear of just of the whole of everyone. And even if I'm not interacting with it directly, I think it's still weighing on all of us even. And so to be able to acknowledge that there's this huge stress that's kind of clamping down on everybody, even though you may not acknowledge it directly that it's affecting you i do think it's important to 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 know that that might be affecting you does that make sense because i don't know if you like you were like i'm fine this stuff doesn't bother me at all and you know but but it was it was bothering you i don't think it i don't i don't think it was bothering me direct bothering me directly and to this date I still don't think it has. I think it has a lot to do with the energy and then the flow yeah. of energy and the negativity that's out there and, and absorbing it, you know? I think it's a subconscious thing that's happening. So that's what I mean. I, yeah. I, I think you don't think you're being bothered by it. Consciously, you're not. But subconsciously, there's something very interesting happening probably for all of us. And those are great conversations to have with your significant other and your kids. I mean, if your kids are over four, they get what's going on. And, um, you know have a conversation with them, be, be vulnerable and authentic and let them know that, you know, this affects everyone, but you know, I don't know. I, I mean, I do know. I just said I, something that I knew. <laughs> well, we don't have any kids, so we can't try yeah. it out. The nice thing about when we talk about old. our relationship is we, we try these things out with our kids are already grown though. So when we have kids suggestions, if we haven't, We've never went, we never went through anything like this with our kids. 
no, but I, I would, if I did have my kids here and they were young, I would try really hard to communicate, be open with them and, and have them be, help us be part of the solution. So that's all we can do. And that brings us to number three, which is when we do slip, cause we're gonna, um, it's very, very important that we, we have some grace and forgiveness for ourselves. So forgiveness is the third thing. And, um, forgiving ourselves for eating that bag of Cheetos, drinking a beer at noon, doing whatever it is that, <laughs> that snapping, we did. snapping, telling someone, stories, doing angry. whatever, um, is, is it's key. Um, we're all going to make mistakes. Life's a giant series of decisions and trial and error. Is half what of them are good now. and half of them are bad. It's what we do with it after the fact that matters. So there's no point in dwelling on the bad ones. Um, that being said, forgiveness of others is also for you because if you're pissed off at somebody, um, typically the person that's the most hurt by that is you. So by being able to forgive others, then you can also help fill up your love cup a little quicker. Well said. I don't think I've ever heard you really talk about forgiveness too much. You usually let me do that. I know. Well, so I've, I've had to do some of that myself. I've, I've waited years for apologies that are probably never going to come. Um, they aren't. <laughs> <laughs> and if they do, that's not going to be the way I ever imagined them. So well, let's just move on. Forgiveness um, isn't just for those who apologize. In fact, apologies have nothing to do with forgiveness. I, I know that. I'm just, I was. Well, was I'm just tossed. saying it for our audience. I know you know it. Well, no, you're. T- <sighs> Are Why you don't okay? you tell them, <laughs> tell them about number uh, number three, four, sorry. Number four is gratitude. So when we get the first two things, three things done, um, we need to start opening up to more loving actions. And the, one of the best one of those is What's your gratitude. Okay, I'll let you talk now. I've really been chatty today. You are chatty today. It's all right. Um, I think gratitude is the fastest way to get from a state of anything sort of difficult or negative to a loving place, no matter what the thing is, because you can always find something to be grateful for. And if you focus that on your partner or your kids or even this situation, you'll you'll find something. Just keep looking. When you do find it and you do feel that gratitude, that changes your entire vibration. All of your energy changes when you do that. And it's a quick and easy way to set your mind and your body and everything at ease in a different direction. And gratitude for yourself is also part of self-love. You know, what are you grateful for about yourself? What are you grateful for about yourself? Um, That I can be introspective and pull myself out of. Um, I I feel like I, I'm grateful that I don't. Well, this is. Well, I'm just gonna go with it. I don't care if somebody wants to argue with me if it's true or not. But I'm grateful. <laughs> that I feel like I don't stay in one place for stay stuck or in one place for too long. I figure it out and I move and and I I take action. So. Good one. Um, how about you? Self-gratitude's hard, don't you think? Mm, Yeah. We spend so much time beating ourselves up that we start believing it. So when you're trying to be grateful about something, uh, there's a part of your mind that's like, ah, bullshit. Not that. (laughs) That's not, I, yeah, that's that true. I don't know if that's true. I was trying to think of something I'm grateful for about myself right now. I think I think the thing I'm grateful for about myself right now is the grace that I'm able to give myself because I have my allergies, I'm feeling a little apathetic, and I'm not, instead of beating myself up about all that, I'm just sort of letting myself be how I am. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that grace I've I've learned to give myself instead of, because I'd be in a much worse place if I was beating myself up about what didn't get done today and how I don't feel very well and all that stuff so then the last thing that we have in our 
top five to stay alive during the lockdown is Ooh, that was that was catchy, babe. I just thought of it just now. I should be a rapper. I guess I can't do a beatbox. Never you mind. can't beatbox and rap at the same time. I'd have to beatbox for you. There's people that can do that. There's super talented people that can do it. Oh. I think. Is it you? No. Okay. Nobody super talented and Patrick Cullinane, I'm pretty sure, at least this Patrick Cullinane, haven't been used in the same sentence. You mean rapping? Well, definitely about music. Anything to do with music. <laughs> know you're pretty good at picking out good music i have a i have a good ear you have a good ear but i don't think super talented was ever tossed around you're super talented with numbers i'm super talented with the v-a-g-i-n-a with uh <laughs> mine i don't know about all of them but definitely Sorry. good with mine babe dang it we were doing so good and then to throw that dumb thing in there I thought oh, that was yourself quite a grace funny. And move on all right so <laughs> You're very good with my. <laughs> the very last thing lady part. is uh, it's just to be loving because the more you spread love um, and show love, the better your household and your neighborhood or wherever you are doing that is going to be. And, the, and you're, you're basically counterbalancing all of those negative vibrations with super positive ones. And that's what the world needs right now. Yeah. Be the light. Know the love languages of all the people in your family that you're quarantined with and show that love to them every day. Exactly. In the way that they understand love. I love the love languages. I do too. So to recap, those number are one. our top five to stay alive during the lockdown. One. In, uh, number one is self-care. Number two is introspective. Three was forgiveness. Four is gratitude. And the number five, the big one, once we master all those, then we'll never master anything. Once I don't think you, these have to, I don't think they're sequential. No. I think you have no. to do all of them all the time. They're absolutely non -sequential. These are your four most powerful tools in your relationship tool belt during this time. There are four now? I mean five. <laughs> <laughs> um, five. Yep. And the last one's to be loving expressing love be and we love to each other. all of our listeners and everybody that's always supported us thank you so much and we're here if you need us patrick yeah. at biggerlove.com sam at biggerlove.com you can reach us on facebook instagram instagram just shoot us a message especially if you're having any if you're struggling please if, yeah, contact us yeah we'll you can also you. you can also message us on facebook did i already say that yeah yeah we're happy to chat we are we um especially during this time. We don't have all the answers, but we were good listeners. So, And if we don't have good answers, we'll go find some. Yeah, exactly. So thanks for tuning in. We hope you are safe, healthy, sane, happy. Yep. Loving. Wash those hands. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Love to everyone. Over and out.